Hey everybody, welcome back to Jordan Samuel Skin Talks. I'm here with an extremely special guest. This is Kristen Arnett, who is, she was one of the first, uh, she's internationally renowned makeup artist. She was one of the first to bring green beauty into the makeup scene and the fashion scene too. I mean, yeah. you've been working all over the world. She is uh, at the forefront of the healthy beauty scene in, in skincare and in makeup. Um, we are both members of the LGBTQ community and we are here today for a special Pride video and uh, I'll let Kristen talk about what we're going to do and what we're going to talk about in the video. But welcome yeah. Kristen. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, I love doing things like this that are kind of out of the box because typically people see my videos, I specialize now really working with women over 40 but um, teaching makeup and I do a lot of like no makeup makeup. You know, that's what I'm known for is that really fresh look. Which I love. Which we love, yes. Oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes. th there's a reason I'm known yes, for yes, it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, and as a makeup artist, I've also had fun being creative and playing. And so we are going to, what, like, bend the gender yes. line right now. And I'm going to do makeup on Jordan. I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> We've actually talked about this for years now. Like I remember talking about it years yeah, ago yes. where like it would be a fun thing to do. And talk about <clears throat> the LGBTQ community yes. in also within the respect of green beauty because there's a surprising amount of LGBTQ people in green beauty, but it, I feel like it's kept a little bit under the radar. Absolutely. It's um we were talking about this earlier too, but we're going to have that. So for all of you who wanted to see the cats I, I said to Kristen, as soon as we start filming, there's going to be a performance, and yeah, he's great. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, but yes, there's there is, but I feel like it's still a I don't want to say a silent discussion, but it's a little bit like um, it, this is funny, not even to bring this up, but I just watched on Netflix Ellen DeGeneres' stand up, and she had so good. a screen come down when she talked about when she came out, she thought everybody else was going to sort, she was going to pave the way, and everybody else was going to come out. And she was like, it didn't quite work that way. And is it like meerkats? She showed like a video of like meerkats coming up and being like, <laughs> how to go? And then like go back down. Yes, and yeah. I feel like yeah. it's a little bit like that still yeah. because of course it's still something that we've made strides certainly, but we have a long way to go. Yes. Um, and, but it's great. Like we're fighting the fight and we're getting it out there. But yes, I do think that the green beauty space and, and beauty in general and ballet too and makeup and everything. Yeah. Cause you're known for all the ballet yeah, yeah, yeah. and that influence and frankly in fashion, you'd think that too, it'd yeah. be super cool. Everything's accepted LGBTQ, but to be a lesbian woman in fashion was very different. There was a lot of yeah. comments made. I felt very closeted for a long time. So it was, it was tricky. But while we talk about it, I want yeah, to start doing absolutely. some stuff on your face. <laughs> and I'm sure your skin is prepped. I always touch skin, yes. you know, but... I kept it light today. Oh, good. No, I'm glad you did. Okay. Um, but yes, I always touch skin. If you watch my videos, you'll see I spend a lot of time on skincare. Yes, absolutely. You know, you know. So this is just a concealer from Han Cosmetics Natural Ingredients. You know, everything I use is going right, to be right. with natural organic ingredients. Um, and I'm just assuming this is the right color. I kind of looked at you and just made a quick Perfect. guess. Because I'm on my way through Seattle, did a class here for women over 40, and I'm about to get on a train in like two hours. Mm -hmm. So we're like doing We're getting it in, we're getting it in. It's Pride Month, it's June. And it... It took me back that it's June already. Like, I and the you, you know, a lot of people like the gray and the rain, but mm -hmm. I always try to rush through. I hate to say that, but January, February, March in Seattle, I'm like, mm -hmm. come on. Mm -hmm. And uh, but now that it's June, I'm like, when did that happen? I know. <laughs> I know. Like, what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. Um, I now mark pride off on my calendar because otherwise I'll forget that it's actually coming and I'll book things and clients. That's, this and, is exactly what happened. And I'm like, I have to gay represent, you know, I got to go to pride. I gotta... Same. Sometimes I've walked in the parade. I've walked in New York pride. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that's amazing. It is. It's really um, an overwhelming experience, but uh, it's great. And I think what one of the things that I feel like people don't understand, particularly who are of a younger generation, is that pride was a protest. Right, right, exactly. Um, you know, it started with Stonewall riots. There was tear gas thrown at gay men and lesbian women walking in the streets saying, we don't want to be illegal anymore. Right. We want to be able to just live our lives and not be aggressed by police officers and beaten and left in jail for 
just who we want to dance with, you know? <laughs> yeah, and that's really for real. what it came down to. So, okay, I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. I'm putting yes, a little yes. concealer on. Yes. Close your eyes for me. Um, around your eyes and then all over your eyes. And I'm using this as an, uh, what's gonna be our fabulous eyeshadow base. Oh, I can't I'm wait. I'm gonna put a little bit of shimmer and glitter. Nothing too over the top, because we're just doing more of like a a femme fabulous kind of look. And I don't know, I didn't plan it out too much, so it could be. That's even better though, right? I feel like it's even better. Just go and say, <laughs> it's real. I mean, that's what I always talk about here, but like things have to be real. Like, yes, I'm gonna sit down and have a martini and talk to people, like that's how, and I feel like this is the same way. We're doing makeup, it's not, I mean, it's planned, but it's not like. It is, to except I, I'm gonna be honest, everything in fashion um, is not real. It's very contrived, <laughs> I come from, I come from, <laughs> Like they're real, like I've worked for Pat McGrath, Charlotte right, Tilbury, right. Dick Page, like you perfect your craft and then you also see the smoke in the mirrors that happen around right, it. Right, around, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna choose a brush, let's see. So interesting, so you put concealer on the lid. Mm-hmm, yeah, people get really obsessed with feeling like they need to use um, primers and I just don't feel like I ever use primers. No fashion makeup artist I know, unless they're doing somebody, like a celebrity where their makeup stays and it has to do, I, very few people use primers. It looks too dry. I also hate, and I've talked about Oh, there's this. a hate word coming. <laughs> I just hate the actual feeling of uh, primers. Like mm -hmm. not even good, bad, ugly, and different. It's, I just, the feeling any primer I've ever tried, like whether doing stuff with stage makeup in the ballet or mm -hmm. playing around having fun, I want to like cleanse my face immediately. Like it's just some, it's Do you a, know why? Because I could tell you probably why. Uh, it's the silicone. It's silicone. Well, yes, exactly. Which I it's acting like saran wrap on your skin. And I um, don't, as viewers know, I'm not a fan of silicone. I, I mean, there's there's a time and place I do feel like there's certain times I've talked about where I give it a pass. But I personally like my skin hates it, and I also even regardless my the feeling it's um, when I talk about it now I get like it. I feel it in my teeth. It's almost like um, oh, really? like nails on a chalkboard. Like oh. the feeling of it, like really, like bothers me. Mm, yeah. Um, and also, I just don't want skin to feel like that. You know, it's not skin. Anyway. Right. So, right. 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 Um, I don't. Is it funny to talk to everybody with your eyes closed? No, I love. Because I could kind of be doing anything while your eyes are closed, like. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what face I'm making right now. I think it's great and it'll be fun and perfect for the channel. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just putting on like this very, very delicate gold glitter. Oh. And I'm kind of, I know, I say glitter and you're like excited that it's a big <laughs> chunky gold glitter. It's not, it's a Jane Iredale um, glitter and I'm basically creating like a little rim all the way around your eye area. Love it. Which is something a little different, right? I don't think that this is what everybody needs to do for their beauty makeup, but hey. Maybe. You guys have all seen, well, maybe you haven't, but you will soon see that most of my tutorials are like, delicately place anything shimmery in one area. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, not delicately place it everywhere. Unless it's pride. You can open your eyes now. I'm working I'm working on the cheekbones right now, baby. Oh yeah, oh. <laughs> Turn a little to me this way. Um, I really feel like I was surprisingly closeted in the fashion industry. There was a lot of deprecating remarks made about lesbians when I was working in fashion. I also lived in Milan um, around 2007 to 2009, and it was not open. I mean, I've yeah. been, I have not felt safe being out a lot. And you know, I'm 41, so I grew up in a world where we didn't have any representation of anything that was positive around being gay. I didn't know what being a lesbian was. Yeah. So it, you know, I just was, every time I had to talk to somebody about who I was dating, I was outing myself. Or right. every time I, confronted any new situation or person and you go out with like new girlfriends that you meet somewhere and they're like, oh my God, look at that guy, da, da, da. and I'd be like, oh yeah, he's super cute. Right. Because you know, right, of he's course. super cute. <laughs> you well, right, well, right, right. You know, um, but at what point does it become very awkward in any situation work-wise where, you know, now I'm potentially upsetting and offending somebody who's gonna pay for 
me to come on the job that pays my bills, it affects my survival. Yeah. My very yeah. survival, whether or not um, people are okay with who I want to be with. Right. How does my personal life matter or affect my work? I don't understand that. Well. And now there's you know laws and and things that are against people. Who, what are they? Why? I know. What you do, you do know. what you do in your private life and who you do it with in your bedroom. Right. You're consult, consenting adults. Right. How, why should this affect your job? I agree. I got really loud. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Um, but no, it's true. You know, it's it's what we were talking about earlier. You know, yes, there's been great strides, but many more to go. Um, and just to make it not even accept it, but normal. Mm -hmm. And I hate to use the term normal too, really, but... Oh, do you? I don't know, just when I said it just now, it seemed like... Because it is normal, you know, but what is that? By the way, I'm putting lipstick on your actual face now. Love just, it. Okay, go back to what you're saying. Um, I mean, it is normal, but like, what is normal, right? Like, that's the other thing too. Like, I also just... I'm weird and odd, and so normal to me is also a stupid word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always, you know, I always say to my friends, like, I'm, as, I, I'm totally weird, and that's my normal. Right, right. You know, I, don't, I think we all have our own version of a free flag. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, and right, that can be our own version of our normal, too. Um, and that's actually what I love about um, the Pride Parade now, not the Pride Protest. Mm -hmm. um, I love that what you see are people who are expressing how they feel. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And and what they feel most comfortable in that they might not be able to walk around as in society. Totally. Um, I worked with a transgendered activist named Gina Rosero. Do mm -hmm. you know who she is? No, but... She's amazing. She's doing great work. Um, and we did a photo shoot in New York for her project working with a gender fluid, gender neutral, transgendered youth. Oh. And it was called Beautiful As You Wanna Be. And so I did makeup for these transgendered or gender fluid youth, how they felt beautiful, how they wanted to present. I love that, yeah. And I have to say, you know, that taught me something because even as a part of the LGBTQ community, I'm still a little bit old school where back in, we'll call it my day, Queer wasn't an okay word to use. Right, right. Queer was actually yeah, really exactly. derogatory, yep. and it's been reclaimed. So, as things have have shifted, and now gender neutrality, and now there's a lot more talk about transgender um, initiatives and uh, the pronoun for yep. you know they, them, there. It's it's confronting me. It's pushing my boundaries too. So I don't want people to feel like, you know, it. it it feels easy necessarily yes, to right. make exactly. the change to evolve. Exactly. You know, because it doesn't for me. It doesn't feel easy, but I want to do it because I really, really care. I really care that people feel respected. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing too. It's okay to ask because everybody's learning. Everybody's learning. Yeah. And this and anything else in life, right? So, like, that's just the thing. Just ask. Don't, you know, be uncomfortable because you don't know. Don't. Um... But I think the ask is also part of it. Like, what are you asking and how are you asking Well, <laughs> So talk about that just a little isn't bit. Isn't that the truth too, of course. <laughs> I mean, I think, yeah, asking in a, in, a, in a sense of, right, wanting to learn and wanting to, and having curiosity about it and understand it and not, um, because I've had many people ask me that too growing up and I came out very early. Um, Did I came, you? Yeah, I came out when I was 15. Wow. I'm, Can I ask what year that was? 90. <laughs> it was 2010. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Look up to the ceiling while you lie. <laughs> uh, it was 96. Okay. And um, I had moved away from home. I was living in New York City uh, at the School of American Ballet Dormitories. Um, so there was a bit of freedom there, too, that I had, though I had not planned on coming out then. I planned on coming out when I was 18 and at least had a professional job in the ballet and sort of was paying my bills just in case. You know, you never know. You hear stories. And that was how I Which was. Stories? It was like the horror stories of, you know, parents disowning their children and kicking them out and See you and I hear those stories, but I don't know that everybody else hears that's those true. stories. That's true. That's true. Because every time you come out, it could potentially mean loss of family, yeah. friends, job. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. 
So you were saying you um, came out early. But that's, yeah, that's an excellent point. Um, so then, uh, yeah, at one point my mom was visiting in New York and uh, there was just a time she, she asked me and it was, I just felt like it was the right time. And again, completely like honored to have that freedom, to have that acceptance. And my family completely supports me, has always supported me. And um, I think, you know, the first thing my mom said to me was, we knew when you were three. I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm glad you waited to ask me until I was 15. But <laughs> wow, that's um, interesting. You know, because I think parents who are really paying attention and, you know, they, they know. Oh, they, of course. Of and course. then a lot of parents try to suppress that knowing. Yep, exactly. You know, and that's what's tricky is I hear a lot of like, um, so I have, you know, obviously friends all across the spectrum and what you would consider more of like a butch lesbian who's mm -hmm. way more masculine and doesn't dress in dresses like I do um, and would tell me how when they were little their moms would try to put them in dresses and like the Sunday oh. best sort of thing and they would just cry and cry <laughs> and they didn't want to be put in those outfits even at that age they had a tendency for something else um, and it wasn't necessarily sexuality, it was, like, it was an identity around just the clothing put on them. Yeah. I'm putting pink all over your eyebrows now, how do you feel about that? I love that. So actually speaking of that and speaking of happy and then also feeling um, very thankful to live in uh, a community like Seattle, um, or the Northwest I should say. Right, which is very liberal, very... Yes. Uh, is I, uh, with my husband, was walking down the street just two days ago. And uh, there was a child, uh, a boy, a little boy waiting with his mom for the bus. <clears throat> and he had a Peppa Pig backpack, super cute, great, sweater, pants. I don't and know what Peppa Pig is. It's a, it's a sweet little cartoon. Okay. And then these pink slip-on Mary Janes with a bow. And oh. his mom was super proud to be there with him. He was super proud and owning it to wear them. And I just loved it so much. Oh. Yeah, it, it took my breath away for a second. It wow. really was. Wow. Um, and nice to see. And again, it was what he felt comfortable wearing. Yeah. Um, and, and his mom honored that. And, um, and I know sometimes there's still, um, which I feel when I came out too, my parents, their concern was how I was going to be treated. That's exactly what my mom said. You know, and I so wonder it if was, it's a brainwashing thing too. Right. And I get it. It's fair. It's, they, they understand that we they want, to protect you. they want to protect us and also that it's not, you know, things aren't as, as far along as we sort of may act like they are or we may perceive them to be. Yeah. Um, and again, depending on where you are in the world or the country, you know, there's, there's also different neighborhoods which um, we wouldn't be accepted in mm -hmm. or welcomed, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but th that was just a moment a few days ago that was lovely. And, and perfect timing for Pride Month too to see that. Isn't that interesting how there's also <clears throat> neighborhoods you would be accepted into? And so when I moved into my little town, when I moved to Oregon, um, I was standing outside with my niece who is very obviously queer. Mm -hmm. She's like a queer millennial and she's amazing. And she's helped me open my eyes into this whole new world that I was talking about with the the gender fluidity. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Her friends are very much that way, and so I'll go to parties, and I'm like the old person who's like, she, they, them. The, yes, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm just like constantly trying to get there. Um, and so she, she and I were standing on, you know, the lawn chatting, and one of the neighbors came by, and she stopped. She'd never talked to me before. She stopped, and she said, are you part of the family? Which is interesting, because if you're in... <laughs> the other the cats, cats away. Like, yes, I am part of the yeah, family. I... Um, but it was interesting because that is the terminology that's used in the gay community to not out somebody, but you find out really quickly. Yep. And I don't use this so that you can then go and manipulate people <laughs> into telling you. <laughs> right, lesson one. <laughs> lesson one, be, be cool. Um, <laughs> Okay, we just stopped off camera for a second so you can see. It's a little uneven because I'm not totally looking at his face full on, but, um, you know. Multitasking at its finest. Multitasking. We're talking about some, like, pretty serious, <laughs> you know, life stuff. And then, and then I'm trying to also, like, do crazy makeup with my limited supplies here because, you know, I didn't bring, like, a full kit up to Seattle. I was doing a workshop for women over 40, as I mentioned. But look at how good... Mm. And this is all natural, by the way. This can look with, I mean, a few <laughs> People things. People probably looking at you like, being like, oh, that looks 
weird. <laughs> I love it, but I mean, looking at your... It's a few things. It's a few things. Yeah. So I actually want to put eyeliner on you. Yes. Some guy liner. Love it. Are we good? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to look down for me. And this is not Jordan's first round at the rodeo of getting makeup put on. He used to be a ballet dancer. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do your own makeup? Half, half. Half, half. Yeah. So most men are giant babies when I go to do any makeup on their eye and they flinch and they start leaning back for me because they're not used Oh right, to and they're like trying to get away, yeah. And I'm like, like, sit down. I said, you guys, you know, like stereotypically, you've probably been in fights and punched someone in the face and you've been punched in the face. You've probably been hit in the face with balls and bats and God knows what, right? I'm like, it's a brush. Right, right, <laughs> like, right. Like, I'm barely Settle down. You. <laughs> you know, sit down, sit down. <laughs> But yeah, I've done makeup on um, some pretty well-known uh, men and even athletes, and they get real flinchy around. I don't put guy liner in this kind of makeup on them, but still. What little I have to do, they're super flinchy little. It's so funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, at the ballet, we, like the normal stage makeup, we did ourselves, quote-unquote normal stage makeup sort of what we would wear for a normal show, but character makeup was always done by an artist. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you have lessons when you first start, when you first start at the ballet too, of like what they want to see. So you know you have a guide to yeah. what your stage makeup should look like. Yeah, look down in this way. You have beautiful almond eyes that I didn't quite notice until we started lining them, Jordan. Thank you. Wow. Oh, Jordan's looking a little, a little extra sexy. Same. Look down that way. Um, but you know, isn't that interesting how, uh, I, I will also say that when I do makeup on straight men who, you know, I, I know to be straight right, or at least right, right. they're living their lives that way, um, man, they can get so weird. Like, oh, is this going to turn me into a girl? Am I going to be like a, and they get really weird about it and they have to say all these comments <laughs> around it. like. Yes, eyeliner is totally going to change your sexuality <laughs> when you want. That's what does it. <laughs> Lesson two, eyeliner changes your sexuality. <laughs> uh. Just in case you're like tuning in now, that's a myth. <laughs> I know, right? Can you imagine some somebody like repurposes yeah, exactly. everything you've said and like mashes it together wrong? Exactly. Like down for me in that way. So the reason that I am coaching Jordan to look in different directions, and this is an actual makeup tip for all of you, is that when you have um, your eye looking in different ways, it actually either expands or contracts the skin area. So you, I can't get to as much yeah, that's, if the yeah, eye yeah, is yeah. moved a certain Just. way. Look at me straight on. Oh, fabulous. You know what's fun to... Um, is because we're doing this kind of like just I'm gonna call it the Monet gender fluid look. Wow, yeah. you got steady eyes. Okay. Um, is that it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kinda you know, putting stuff places and mushing it around because we don't have time for a two hour you know, drag makeup. Like I know you really wanted to do at one point. Next time. <laughs> Next time. Next. Oh, that's looking really good. We're I on. love this though. Look at that. Fantastic. <laughs> look at you here. Mm -hmm. Okay, look down. Mm -hmm. good. Now I'm pulling out the purple. Yeah, yeah. And I will just continue to reinforce that this is still all makeup from natural companies. You know, I'm using a little bit of Sappho Cosmetics, Mineral Fusion, um, Gia Minerals, which actually is uh, stage makeup. Oh, really? That's her background. And um, what else am I using? Jane Iredale, Cloven Hallow. So, you know, Green Beauty represents. As, um... <laughs> Jane Ardell, was she sort of the, I know they market themselves too as like the original. Yeah, but she's were, the OG. They, the OG. She's that, the OG. That's awesome. Yeah, look down. Um, you know, what's interesting too is that everybody thinks Bare Minerals invented mineral makeup. Right. And that's totally not true. Um, they were just the first ones to market it. Right. Properly. You know, and get consumers really excited about it. Which, good for them, you know. And you have now too, this is off topic but on topic but off topic 
um, for people who maybe were looking for, you know, they've been interested in mineral makeup and you hear so much, right? That, well, I, I don't know. I'm, I feel like I hear this and, oh, and you I do. could be wrong, but th that they'll say like, you know, mineral makeup or natural makeup, like, oh, it's not long wearing. It's not, you know, the color choices aren't, you know, long wearing or yeah, long it's or not like, effective. yeah. Um, A, what were you to say to that? And then B, what would be your recommendations for that? You know, I think actually mineral makeup wears really well. That's why Bare Minerals was able to do so, so well. I mean, it yeah. sticks on the face, man. Yeah. You're just like, <clears throat> you're in it. Yeah. <laughs> you, it's a commitment. Um, look down that way. What, what you don't have are like the silicones and the other binding synthetics um, that really cause something to wear in a way that people have gotten used to cosmetics wearing. And the demand has become what I think is kind of weird, like lipstick should last 12 hours. I think that's odd. I don't want my lipstick to add, last 12 right. hours. Look up for me. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like, what do you expect makeup to do? I've done makeup using all natural for my career now. And my career, as I mentioned, uh, when I wasn't working on uh, shoots or fashion shows where there was a sponsor, I had to use their makeup. Oh yeah. I always used my clean kit. My celebrity clients, musicians, models, they would be like, oh my god, what did you put on my skin? Mm -hmm. oh, amazing. So I think it performs better. Yeah, That's right. just my stance. And look down. Yes, it was true. Back in the day, there were very few options, and what was there was limited. But there's been an influx. Of, yeah. And now, I, I really feel like that's just a misnomer. When I feel too, you know, I'm putting my own spin on it too because I wanted to find something like that when I danced at the ballet and I retired from the ballet in 2010. And so it's been a while. So I do feel like I sort of missed when things really started to pick up a little bit more mm. in that space. So I feel yeah. like me personally, I also didn't have that opportunity to play around with as much as I am. Um, and even if it wasn't, uh, even if it was there, excuse me, it wasn't out and about and easily, I would say easily accessible as it is now. Yeah. You know, there's so many great green beauty stores and I mean, other major retailers too, just carrying, you know, yeah. great lines. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I find that I would have way more fun now. You totally would. You totally would. Um, and it's, you know, it is expectation. It's what do you want the makeup to do? If you want it to be waterproof while you do a shoot in a pool. Right. Well, right. I mean, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now maybe you're, you're venturing into other territory, but... Mm, I think a lot of times, even with regular makeup, people struggle with it because it's application. This is why I teach how to use things. Right, right. And you'll find that I really flux between how to use something and what to use. Yeah. Because if you don't use it right, Great it point. doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, same in skincare too, right? Right. Yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, so it would be the same thing. You know, a lot of times I feel like, I don't want to say it's user error, but, but you do. But I do. Because, but more a, a real simple user error, you know, using too much product. Uh, people thinking that like, but that's a big thing is that, you know, people be like, oh, this, you know, pills or balls up or doesn't wear well with this. And then I'll see the amount they're using. And I'm thinking, oh my God. Like. That's why. That's because why. you've just gone. <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's actually becoming an increasingly common comment from my makeup clients. When they, when we work one-on-one, -on -one, they say to me, oh. I've been using way too much, mm -hmm. but they're using way too much in the areas they should be using less in, and then they're not using enough in the and places that yes, they should be course, using more of in. Of course, right? I feel like you need a wig now. Oh, <laughs> but it looks good with the freshly shaved head too, right? <laughs> well, you got to do the fierce look. This isn't exactly smiley makeup, or you're gonna look like scary clown. You know, that's why the uh, Instagram influencers and like the YouTube vloggers put all this makeup on, but then they only do this. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm doing for the rest of the yeah. filming. Okay, look up for me. Good. As I smile. As you um, smile. I know, you can't help it because you're just naturally <laughs> such a sweetie pants. <laughs> um, but I'm, yes, I... I'm like getting up because I, you keep talking. Yeah. I just, as a makeup artist, I actually oh. have to move my body and look... Because uh, I can't even see the side of what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I... But yeah, no, I agree. The, the overuse... It, and that's the thing with skin, too. A lot of people, because if they maybe... Um, 
had a product reaction or had something where their skin is feeling a little dry, dehydrated, broken down, they of course want to use more product mm -hmm. or more, not necessarily more products, but more of a single product. And then they have a, not a bad reaction, but a bad experience with that product. And so I, I do feel like overuse of the amount of product used in skincare has become a big, you know, cleanser, no big deal. You end up rinsing it down the drain. You know, like your face will just be full of cleanser and then um, but in terms of leave-on products, yeah, people people use too much or, you know, they wonder why their eye cream is migrating into their eyes. If you use and, too much, and you know. And P.S., your eye cream is also breaking down your makeup. People uh, think like, oh, my makeup, my, my eyeshadow point. doesn't last, yeah. it creases. Well, let me tell you that most people are putting eye cream all over their eyes yeah. and they're trying to put their eye makeup yeah. on. You notice I put concealer on first. And then they're rubbing their eyes throughout the day. Yeah. You cannot do that. Yeah. No. So what do you recommend? That's actually an excellent little tidbit. Do you recommend just like not doing any eye product or? By the way, you're getting like the unicorn glow stick now. Oh my God, yes. Yes. Okay, what? <laughs> for eye product for, um, if you're applying makeup, what would you do? Would you put anything around the eye area? Just like the concealer that you did with me. Uh, oof. So Again, it's different. Would it be case it's, dependent? It's, yeah, yeah. it's case dependent. If let's just call like we have normal skin, it's not too oily, right. it's not too dry. Um, I often don't put anything on the lid. Yeah. You know, but if there's a lot of discoloration on the lid, I put on a dry concealer okay. or um, and then set it with powder. If your concealer is too moist, it's going to do the same thing. Got it. Um, okay. So it's really about kind of creating that balance. Sometimes I'll use a mineral powder, but you've got to be careful. It starts to look real chunky, real. Oh, uh huh. You know, you don't want that. Do you? No, my God, no, but this is also <laughs> interesting. It's just, it's such another... Um, Look down for me. Again, I wish I knew all of this when I was actually like using, ex not extreme makeup, but stage makeup, and I would have... Would have changed some things? Yeah, I would have been you. less frustrated. You know how many brushes I've just used on you? Oh my God. Like a thousand. <laughs> Very few products, but like a million brushes. That's all the brushes happening. tonight. All the brushes. Look up cutie pants. Just made a garbage party or what we did. Oh, no, we did not. We did not make a garbage party. No. That's what my photographer friend in New York calls it when you just, the makeup artist like loses all control and the hairstylist loses all control. A garbage she's, party? Yeah. She's like, so we've just done a garbage party and we have to start over. <laughs> There's no recovery. <laughs> it's sort of amazing. <laughs> this is no garbage party. This is no. This is no garbage zone. Okay, what are we doing now? Um, I'm, I'm just putting more on. Right. That's, that's really like the mantra of all dramatic makeup is just continue to put more on. Perfect. And see where it goes. But I'm blending now with a, a very large brush um, from Cosette. And oh, it's cruelty-free. It's a great makeup artist, Rocky. Um, does all of like Pat's, Pat McGrath. So it's funny, in the industry we just say Pat. Because everybody knows who yes, Pat is, yeah. but in the <clears throat> non-industry world, people know who Pat McGrath is. Right. She came out with her makeup line, but Pat has been right. the uh, prima yeah. donna of makeup forever, and that is a fierce woman. So I was lucky enough to be on her team for a while, um, and That's it's awesome. a <laughs> it's a doggy dog place to be there. Yeah. And so I feel very blessed that I got to do that, and that that's part of my repertoire mm -hmm. as a makeup artist. Um, and I'm very blessed now to live in Oregon. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Chin down, look up for me. There we go. So I'm just adding now the final kicker. All right, I want to do mascara. Great. And then I, and a little lipstick. Great. And then I think we're done. Let's do mascara. Where did I put my... How are you feeling about it? Um, I feel amazing. I feel amazing. I do, it looks so good. Oh, you want to hear a good story? Yes. Um... I got flown down by a big makeup artist to help out with a shoot with Celine Dion. Oh my God. So I didn't get any um, publication credits for it, but she ended up having to leave quite early from the shoot to go do a major campaign. And so she flew out and left me and they were like, we want Celine to look sweaty in her home gym working out in these encrusted bodices of Same. crystals, right? That's Obvi how I work out. Obviously. And I wasn't prepared for sweat on the body. So I had, oh. she has great staff look up for me. So guess what I did? I had her staff go to the kitchen and get me olive oil. Oh yeah. And 
I slathered Celine Dion in olive oil. Oh my god, I love that though. That's, a, <laughs> but, that's like a but right, life story. I know, but right when I got like into her thigh because she's wearing the bodysuit, I, I stopped because I was like, no. I cannot do this. This is too no. And she just looks at me very like regal in her French Canadian accent. She says, "You have to do it." <laughs> and I was like, "Wait." She, she, she knew. <laughs> she knew. I mean, you know, that's like a that's a whole other level of celebrity. And she was lovely. Looked down, and she was kind. And um, I really. Loved Celine after that shoot. Oh yeah, no, I what love a her. fabulous She's... human. Okay, just a little mascara. Love Nothing it. too much. Nothing. This one is a favorite of mine. Mineral Fusion. It's their waterproof. It's clean and oh, cruelty free. Love it. Yeah. Um, okay, let's put a little lippy on you. Great. All right, open. Yes. It's just going to be a hint of color. Uh, and this is a lipstick um, from Gia Minerals. So natural, organic ingredients. You know, because a lot of times I feel like in green beauty now, people are like, oh, natural, but it's still a bunch of poop, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Um, and and sometimes you can't do organic. That's totally a thing. Right. Um, but they actually have both, which I really appreciate. Press, pressing, pressing, yes, yes. I think we need more color here. Yeah, for sure. You do, yeah. Yeah, you already knew that. <laughs> <laughs> you already, Jordan's like, we just need all of the makeup. He'd be happy if I was putting on full lashes, which I almost brought, but I knew we wouldn't have to. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. I know. Next time, next time. Next time. Next time, <laughs> next time you're doing my makeup. Oh God, you don't want me. I might. Okay. You've done theater makeup on yourself. Uh-huh. But you know, in school, in like aesthetic your school, apprentice. when I had, yeah, you, well, your dance apprentice. I think I do your apprentice, but yeah. Uh, no, 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 you're gonna teach me dance. Okay, and then you teach me makeup. <laughs> you know what was so interesting, and mm -hmm. I'm sure there's it, obviously, I mean, it makes sense. Tell me. But doing makeup on myself was one thing, and then when I went to aesthetic school and we did do a bit of makeup and I started to do it on other people, I was like, oh, this is a whole different ballgame. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like I was. Right? Oh, like, especially preaching. because I've only done makeup on myself, so then it was just this, like, what the heck? Like, I felt like my arms were twisted on back. Like, everything was just, like, I couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I just, it was a very interesting. Well, and that's that's that whole thing of, like, the whole YouTube vlogging community. Oh. is just because somebody can do makeup on themselves, they cannot necessarily do makeup on someone else. And, well, yes, that's, I know this case in point. And an artist, um, you know, as an artist working in New York, I would get calls frequently at a certain point when they started using influencers for campaigns. Right. Like, oh my God, can you come help and save this shoot? Look down for me. I think you need more green. More green. That's where, I, that's where I'm at right now. If I had thought ahead, I would have, oh, I could just dip this in my water over there. It'd be even more intense. But you know, Jordan, we just gotta, we gotta end somewhere. I could do this for hours. On <laughs> and you it. would let me. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, now this is the pièce de résistance. I'm sure I said that wrong, but I like to say it no, as if well, I think it's that's correct. that's how I would have. Look down for me. So I am putting the one over one lip gloss directly on your eye. And yes, it's gonna break down the makeup. It's an editorial finish to give you just the tiniest bit of a glossiness to your eye. So you do it right at the end of makeup. This is the gloss right here. I'm gonna put a little bit more. I like this company, the one over one. Have you heard of them? No. Mm -hmm. I like the name, one over one. Yeah. The whole thing is minimalism. Oh, I love minimalism. I know, I know. Oh, you and that Italian line too. Hello. Oh, that's just so, Thank you. So good, all the new little goodies you came out with. Okay. Oh, Jordan, you are my creation. I love it so much. <laughs> Thank okay. you, I'm I mean, so wait, excited. Wait, wait, you gotta see it in the mirror, you gotta see it in the mirror. There you go. I'm so goopy, I can't hand you the mirror. Oh my god, I love it. The eyes. Do, that... the, do, the, do, the, do the side, get all the angles. I mean, I love it. Are we seeing the angles? I'm just obsessed with that, like I'm really obsessed with the eye. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. We're gonna have to get a close-up shot. <laughs> do it, but do the angles, do the angles, yes. Work it, do it YouTube style, YouTube style. Uh, we should have some music on right now. 
We can like, oh, well, I'm not saying that now and I'll like mess it up. So I always say like, I'm gonna do something on the video and then it's like, too, takes too much time. And I'm like, next time, we'll do the next time. That's why I was giving you my little yes, like, I know. weird no. techno moment. Yeah, no, perfect. We'll use that. That's the. Yeah. Oh, very nice. You guys, look at how fantastic this is Gender for Pride. Fluid. Gender fluid. Pride. Love. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome oh my so god, much. this is amazing. The talk was amazing. Learning about the products, the learning about makeup, the learning about the pride and, and yeah, the history yeah. of, and just um, we've more to do, but we're doing it yeah, and we're yeah. fighting the good fight. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful pride. I hope you have a wonderful pride. Thank you, you too. And thank you so Happy much for second. stopping by and gracing. <laughs> You're gonna be doing this all day. I expect selfies after this. Oh. I expect Instagram selfies. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Action happening. We're gonna, yeah, exactly. We're gonna like already start to um, tease this by full on exactly. like, selfie. Yeah. And if you don't know who I am, typically I don't do this level of makeup, <laughs> but I love to play. I love to have a good time. I feel like, you know, life's short, and beauty should be something that you enjoy that adds beauty from inside of yourself. It's not about fixing self-deprecation, and being a part of that. LGBTQ community, you really learn that the the goal is to respect and love people for who they feel yes. they are fully expressed as. Yep. And so I hope that for all of you, there's not one right path on this beauty. Ain't that business. the truth? Yeah. Do you? You do you. Own you, be you. And guess what? Then we're then you're paying it forward. Then I feel like too, if you're radiating yourself and, and, and everybody is accepting it too, everybody's able to pay it forward and that sort of string of love is what can actually heal us. I mean yeah, not to get life's but short. It's too short. My so. grandma, you know, she always say the most important thing you can do is love each other and be kind to each other. It's so that I mean that's, that's it. it. And then I, the again we're then all put in the perfect place to then pay it forward and feel good about ourselves and then yeah. to make the world a better place, so. Because who cares if you have the latest technology and car and all the oh God. coolest clothes yeah, no. if what no. you are on the inside is somebody who is miserable and making other people miserable. Exactly, Yeah. Exactly. So, spread the love, spread happy the pride. Love. Happy pride, thank you so much, Kristen. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thanks for letting me paint you. Absolutely, <laughs> and thank you all for watching, and I will link all of Kristen's info down below. Um, and thank you all for watching, and happy pride. Bye.